New York is an interesting state when it comes to roller coasters. You have some of the oldest and most historic wooden roller coasters in the world. Then you also have two Six Flags parks, while Great Escape and Darien Lake don't have the same breadth and depth as some of the chain's other parks, they still offer some rare and notable coasters. So in this video, I will rank the top 20 coasters in the state of New York. I have ridden every adult coaster in the Empire State with two exceptions. I have not ridden either the Nor'easter Mountain Coaster at Greek Peak Resort, or the Cliffside Coaster at Mount Van Hovenberg. Therefore, neither coaster will be featured on this list. Additionally, I already have reviews posted for majority of the coasters discussed in this countdown. I have them published for every coaster in the top 10 except one of them, plus several others further down the list. Check these out if you want more in-depth thoughts on any of these rides mentioned. Number 20, Bob Sleds at Seabreeze. This is a quirky family coaster. The ride started off as a wood coaster, but the park owner performed what may have been the earliest hybrid conversion on record making it one of the first tubular steel coasters. While the ride itself has no standout elements, a few of the drops have some zip and the ride is very charming. You have individual cars painted to different countries and a layout working its way around an oak tree. Number 19, Dragon Coaster at Rye Playland. This old wood coaster tracks remarkably well for its age. Even in the very back row, you'll get a smooth ride. It comes at the expense of intensity though. This ride only has two notable pops of airtime, one on the first drop in the back, and another one on one turnaround up front. The rest of the ride is fairly forgettable, but it is a very long experience, and you have that iconic dragon tunnel that looks undeniably cool. Number 18, Soarin' Eagle at Luna Park, and Super Flight at Rye Playland. Zamperla Volares are among the most hated coaster models out there. Many find the caged restraints a torture chamber. But I personally have never had a major issue on these flying coasters. The turns are jerky, but the way my body is pressed into the harness prevents headbanging. Instead, I enjoy the nice forces and the two barrel rolls of some really freaky hang time. Number 17, Whirlwind at Seabreeze. This is a Mauer SC2000 spinning coaster, but this run runs better than most. The trim brakes don't slow the train down much, and the cars seem to spin more resulting in a more intense experience. I was spinning like a top for the final two-thirds of the ride. I also really like the start. You get a great view of the bay at the top, and the first drop gives a nice freefall sensation if you take it backwards. Number 16, Galaxy at Sylvan Beach Amusement Park. You can find SDC galaxies all over the place, but this is the best one of experience for two reasons. One, it has the two car trains, this gives pops of airtime in the first two drops in the back car. Two, the brakes after the second helix fail to engage at the end, so you get some shocking laterals and one last airtime pop on the run back to the station. While the middle helixes are pretty dull, the elements around it are good fun. Number 15, Viper at Six Flags Darien Lake. This was the first coaster to open with five inversions. This arrow creation is nearly four decades old, and it does show its age. There are some questionable transitions and shuffling that can lead to headbanging for smaller riders. The ride does have some forceful elements though. The initial drop gives a good burst of airtime, the first three inversions pile on the positive G's, and the final two corkscrews are taken slow enough to offer some hang time. Number 14, Steeplechase at Luna Park and Moto Coaster at Six Flags Darien Lake. The original Zamperla motorbike layout is a punchy little ride. Despite the modest height and speed, the flywheel launch has some nice power to it. Then you have a series of layered turns and dips. The abrupt changes of elevation offer these weird bits of diagonal airtime. This is a layout I don't mind seeing cloned because it's fun for the entire family. Number 13, Alpine Bobsled at Great Escape. This intimate bobsled is one of the most unreliable coasters in the world but it is enjoyable when it's open. Unlike the other bobsled coasters, you ride in a big single car side by side. The vehicle has a lot more heft to it, and you can feel them lift off the track after a few little dips on the layout. It is quite the thrill. Then a few of the turns are quite enjoyable as you slide up and down the trough. The one downside from a ride perspective is that the entries into the brake runs are quite jarring, 
and they really slam the bobsled side to side. Number 12, Sky High Mountain Coaster at Holiday Valley. This is a fairly average mountain coaster. You have the obligatory wooded setting on a hill. This one does not have any airtime moments, but the turns are fast and well concealed until you hit them. Number 11, Phoenix at Dino's Wonder Wheel Park. This Vacoma suspended coaster is great for all ages, as it has a low height limit, it's smooth, and it offers some forces without going too extreme. The ultra compact layout has fluid transitions and some tight turns with good positive G's. The two overbanks in the middle of the ride are very powerful up front, including one that feels darn close to an inversion. Meanwhile, the final turns offer more oomph in the back. Just do not expect any notable drops here. Number 10, Dragon Coaster at Legoland New York. This seer creation starts with the obligatory dark ride segment with some stylized and charming medieval scenes. Then the outdoor segment has a lot more power than I expected for a ride at this park. The turns and helixes offer good positive G's, so don't be surprised if you start to gray out in a spot or two. This crushes the other dragon coasters of the California and Florida parks. Those ones do not have the same kick as this one. Number 9, Silver Common at Niagara Amusement Park. This CCI wood coaster recently reopened after being SBNO for years. I previously rode this coaster in 2010, and I remember it having more power back then. My 2022 rides felt sluggish, but the coaster was very smooth at least thanks to a lot of recent track work. It only has some weak spots of airtime, which is surprising for a CCI, but the turnarounds in the middle have nice laterals, particularly towards the front of the train. Number 8. Tantrum at Six Flags Darien Lake. This Gerslauer Eurofighter is a clone of Iron Shark, and it's a solid ride with a good mix of forces. The Beyond Vertical Drop has some intense ejector airtime. You will go flying out of your seat. The pullouts have good positive Gs. The Illman has a pinch of hang time. Then there are a few smaller hills giving sharp pops of airtime. And this is all experienced with just a lap bar. This enhances the airtime and makes it a comfortable experience too, unlike some of the other Eurofighters with over the shoulder harnesses. Number 7, Jack Rabbit at Seabreeze. This is the oldest continuously operating coaster in North America, and it's still a good ride. This coaster is a fun setting. Most of the layout takes place outside the park's main boundaries, and the drops burrow into dugout valleys. Then the return run whizzes past trees and heads into a surprise tunnel finale. Several drops give good pops of airtime. Nothing too crazy, but it's quite good considering the ride's age, especially if you're up front. And the unbanked turns dish out some laterals too. Then the ride is very well maintained and quite smooth. Number 6, Turbulence at Adventureland. This mock spinning coaster is super compact, but it has an edge to it. The ride gets stronger as it goes. By the midpoint, there is a good chance you'll be spinning like a top. The turns also get snappier as they go, and the ride culminates in a really forceful downwards helix that'll ruin your sense of direction. The coaster is short, but no two rides are the same, and it's super smooth. Number 5, Comet at Great Escape. This classic wood coaster is the crown jewel of the Six Flags Park. Built from the bones of the Crystal Beach Cyclone, this double out and back layout features plenty of airtime hills. Now unfortunately, this ride does not run as fast as it once did, which has taken away quite a bit of the airtime, but it still pops you out of your seat several times. Most hills offer weak airtime nowadays, but there are a few stronger bursts towards the end. Then the turns, which are all unbanked, offer some laterals for variety. And while the speed has suffered, the park still has this old ride running very smoothly. Number 4, Predator at Six Flags Darien Lake. This placement is contingent upon a ride in the very front row. Up there, this din creation is fairly smooth and tolerable. But if you ride in a wheel seat, this ride has the potential to really rough you up. If you can look past the shakiness, I really like this ride's layout. The first two thirds have strong airtime, and it is extra sweet because it's often paired with laterals. Few rides can offer as many instances of laterals and airtime simultaneously. Number 3, Thunderbolt at Luna Park. I know many despise this ride, 
many hate the restraints and take issue with the roughness. While the Panini Press harnesses are certainly tight, they don't cause me any pain personally. Then the train jitters, but it's not enough to cause me a headache, and the restraints don't cause any head banging. So instead, I can appreciate the wild layout. The first drop offers a good pop of ejector airtime. The first three inversions all get you out of your seat, including the far turnaround which is this funky dive loop that offers a forceful inverted pop of airtime. Then the return run consists of some powerful bunny hills loaded with ejector airtime, plus a super whippy corkscrew. Number 2. Ride of Steel at Six Flags Darien Lake The Pro-Type Intimate Hypercoaster may not match the company's later installations, but it still has some great moments. The third hill has some powerful and sustained ejector airtime. It's one of the best hills in any Intamin. Then several other hills, particularly those in the finale, also offer strong negative Gs. The ride also maintains its speed very well, and it has a neat location over the water. However, the ride has less than ideal pacing due to the infamous section of straight track and those repetitive helixes. And coming in at number one is Cyclone at Luna Park. So many people have tried to duplicate this ride, but none can match the raw intensity of the original. This classic wood coaster is an absolute joy. The trains are one of the biggest factors. It has single position lap bars, so you get plenty of airtime. And you have no seat dividers, so you get thrown side to side in a good way in this ride. The back car is the better seat for the airtime. The larger drops offer some wonderful ejector airtime. You come a good foot out of your seat. The front car is better for laterals. You get some of the strongest laterals on this ride, as you're violently thrown side to side going in each turn. I always come off this coaster laughing, because no modern coaster could offer the experience quite like this. So those are the top 20 roller coasters in New York. Let me know down in the comments what your favorite coasters are in the state. Is the Coney Island Cyclone your favorite as well? Or do you prefer one of the state's more modern coasters? If you enjoyed this countdown, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.